Who's calling? Hello? Yeah, this is Jill. KubeCon. Of course I'm going to KubeCon. I mean, would I miss the biggest Cube event of the year? An exhibition match? Against who? You want me to play against Team J-Bro? Uh, well, Vintage Cube's online. I guess we could just do that now. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell him I'll see him online. All right, let's play. Let's do this. In the red corner, the newcomer challenger with nothing to lose. It's Jill MTG. And in the blue corner, the most consistent cube trophy leader on Magic the Gathering Online. And the undisputed SCG Con Cube World Champion, it's Team J Bro. Hey, welcome. Uh, this is Chill, and I got John Terrell of Culta Cube in the booth right next to me. We're looking at my deck right now. It's a white black, kind of aggressive deck, top end with Grave Titan. Some solitude action, love that card. Some of the key removal here, Swords to Plowshares, Thought Seized, and also a Greek. John here, why don't you tell us about J-Bro's deck? Yeah, John Terrell here. Hey, everybody. Here's J-Bro's deck. We've got another aggressive deck. This one is Mono White. J-Bro's got some extraordinarily powerful cards with a Mox Pearl and the Library of Alexandria. J-Bro, he's got a very aggressive deck on the one hand, but on the other, he's willing to go way up the curve, all the way up to an Elish Norn. We'll have to see how that serves him. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. All right, welcome to Match 1, Game 1, Exhibition, Chill MTG versus J-Bro. Here's the opening hand. We are on the draw with J-Bro winning the coin toss. All right, this is an exciting opener. You've got an aggressive deck. You've got two lands. How are you feeling about the hand? Yeah, with the Usher of the Fallen and Relic Order in hand, I know I'm going to have a turn one to play. Two planes in hand, so that Spectral Procession is likely to come down on turn three. Additionally, that Grief, even without a Black Source, we can use that Blood Chief's Thirst to evoke the grief using its alternate casting cost. So I'm really liking this hand. Oh, wow. And J-Bro leads with the Library of Alexandria. That's scary. So as expected, I will lead out Planes into Usher here for turn one. And then J-Bro draws with Library. Ooh, into a Mox. Wow. Yeah, that's really a great turn two from J-Bro. Mox Planes into Stoneforge Mystic, revealing a Batter Skull. My plan for the next turn is to evoke the Grief to strip that Batter Skull from his hand, kind of deny him that resource. So is it Batter Skull in particular that seems scary? What if he'd gotten uh, one of his swords? Yeah, I think I'd take any of the equipment that he searched up here. Batter Skull being especially scary, but not quite as bad as something like GTA. So after attacks here, let me evoke this grief. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Jabro has a stacked hand. There's a lot of great stuff here. It's a very hard call. There's arguments for almost everything there, right? Yeah, so I think this decision really ends up being defining moment of this game. It is super consequential. Any of these cards are really problematic from my side. There's argument to take the swords to plowshares so that way we can get some extra value out of the relic order in hand, because if we don't take the removal, then that relic order is likely going to just get exiled. I do decide to take the batter skull here, but I'm not sure that was the right decision. It does get the batter skull off the battlefield and into the graveyard, but we still leave Jabro with acceleration, two planeswalkers, and removal. Definitely a difficult decision. We'll have to see how it plays out. So playing this Relic Order, expecting it to get removed. Oh, there it goes. Well, you traded resources. Yeah, John, that was kind of expected. But uh, now let's get this Spectral Procession on the battlefield and see if we can make it do some work for us. I do think it's a mistake here not attacking with the Usher. I should use this opportunity to try to get that Mystic off the battlefield if he chooses to block with it. It draws him cards if, you know, if he blocks with it. That's exactly right, John. I didn't want him drawing cards, but that Mystic now is still on the battlefield, and it looks like Jabro's following this up with a Mana Vault ramping into big Elspeth Resplendent. With that Mystic still on the battlefield, Jabro has a target for that plus one counter that Elspeth can provide. Ooh, yeah, tell me about this card, because this is a card that I haven't played much with. Yeah, big Elspeth really working out well for Jabro here. My plan was to hold his Planeswalkers at risk with these Spirit Tokens, 
but Elspeth Resplendent being able to put a flying first strike lifelink or vigilance in addition to a plus one plus one counter through the through her uptick ability uh, is really making a difficult wall for me to get through. Wow, you're big into these evoke cards. I love it. Yeah, solitude, exactly what you want to see off the top of your library there. And with Guy's Cradle and these spirit tokens, I'll be able to hard cast this elemental to clear the way for a nice attack against Elspeth. Nice. Almost gets her off the board. Ooh, there's an old classic, Hero of Bladehold. I may have the board presence right now, but that hero activation creating tokens plus J Bro's skull clamp on his side represents a lot of card advantage, and we do not have an answer in hand. And Selfless Spirit off the top, good card, but not going to answer that hero. No, it saves you guys, but you guys aren't individually extraordinarily important. So we do have attacks here to get that big Elspeth Resplendent off the battlefield, so we'll definitely make that swing, but we are at the mercy of the top of our library and we're going to need an answer quick to answer this hero skull clamp combination but do you have any miracle cards in the deck so we do have additional answers in the deck we have our own swords to plowshares plus either a parallax wave palace jailer or even a dismember off the top but we got to draw one of those soon otherwise this hero blade hole is just going to be too much value to overcome Oh, uh, here comes that other Elspeth. I'm kind of digging the Elspeth tribal thing that J-Bro's got going on over there. So it looks like J-Bro just makes a soldier token with the Elspeth and chooses to hang back. Pretty smart. That's going to protect his planeswalker as well as not offer the trade attacking in with his hero. Ooh, tight hollow scholar off the top. Uh, he's got one card in hand. I don't know. Let's <laughs> see how much this does for us. Yeah, John, looks like just a Cathar commando in Jabro's hand, which we're happy to take. Mm. Uh, but we're still met with this problem of getting this other Elspeth and hero off the battlefield. And don't forget that Elspeth Resplendent put a flying counter on the hero blade hold, which means we don't have any real clean attack against the Elspeth Knight Errant. No, she gets to keep making her boys. So I do decide to get in there. Uh, my plan here is to sack the selfless spirit to maintain my board state and try to take as many loyalty counters off of Elspeth. But we're going to need to find an answer off the top of our library soon. Yeah, living off the top. It's not as if Jaber has many cards in hand, so that's something. But here comes oh a whole bunch of soldiers and battle cry and <laughs> bad business. Yeah, here comes all those tokens, and uh, I, I imagine he's going to skull clamp these tokens for some card draw. Mm, yeah. <laughs> he could draw six cards here if he wanted to. Yeah, don't fault people for picking skull clamp over Ancestral Recall and Draft. Skull clamp goes in a lot more decks, and it can draw you way more than three cards. Uh, looks like J-Bro here is going to play the Student of Warfare and start leveling it up. Yeah. Smuggler's Copter off the top. All right, you got more evasion. That's good. If you had extra cards in hand, you could do some nice filtering. So now that Jabro attacked, I am able to get in with the spirit token since they have flying and uh, try to get this Elspeth off the battlefield. But uh, let's mark the punt counter. Huge punt here. Uh, I pull one of those spirits back, and it happened to be the second one I targeted towards Elspeth. So I end up just doing one damage to Jabro and one damage to Elspeth. Elspeth does survive, and we really just can't. You cannot be making mistakes like that against Jabro. Ooh, intrepid adversary. That's a heck of a card, too. And he can dump extra mana into it with this sort of pseudo kicker it has and then everything just gets huge look at that oh my goodness yeah you said it john this situation just went from bad to worse and here comes a large battle cry attack oh yeah i mean with that intrepid adversary it's like he dropped two honor of the pure on the battlefield with that card since he got kicked it twice and then hero does another kind of anthem effect impression with the battle cry and my goodness you're facing Really, quite an impressive army here. Yeah, j -Bros is really leveraging that go-wide strategy and just continuous card draw with the skull clamp off of all these tokens he's making. Really quite impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the way I like to do Anthem effects personally when I'm playing cube and when I'm designing cube for that matter. I don't really love putting actual anthems that are just in potentially do-nothing enchantments that sit there. Um, but things like that Intrepid Adversary and the Hero of Bladehold that have ways of buffing your guy and also being a real threat. Oof, 
that's awesome. So I'm not conceding just yet. We do have a healthy life total and a lifelink creature to pad that a little bit. And we do have some cards in the deck to help us deal with this blade hold. Uh, but we got to find an answer soon. Otherwise, uh, it is looking pretty grim. Yeah, you had a you had a nice pad to your life there as well. You were sitting in, sitting pretty at 25 or something for a little bit. Yeah, I think the card I'm looking for most now here is Parallax Wave, as that will allow me to okay. deal with a lot of these tokens permanently. Right. But we're going to probably have to get some runner runner here to solve this board situation. All right, lure us off the top. All right, that could do some things. I mean, that's uh, two cards in one, at least, right? Yeah, exactly. What would you cast from the graveyard here, John? Probably that selfless spirit. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that's that's the right choice for me because you badly need some stuff in the air, and the selfless spirit also has this uh, protective effect that you can use, so I, li I like it. Now for attacks here, we will be able to finally clear this Elspeth like we should have last turn, so we'll get in there with the spirit tokens and yeah. uh, hope to stay in this game. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and the council's judgment's going to put the nail in that coffin. Uh, so let's move on to game two. Oh, heartbreaking loss in the first game, but we're back in a second, and you're going to get him this time. I think this opening hand is a keep. We at least have one, two, three drop. John, would you keep this hand? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that skull clamp, that's going to do some real work for you. No doubt about it. Yeah, well, this hand at least is a nice curve. One, two, three drop. So we'll definitely lead out on the skull clamp here. And then Jabro leads out on Plains Mana Vault. Man, <laughs> great start, but you love to see it when you're holding a Relic Order in hand. So our turn two play here is going to be automatic. Heck yeah, get that thing off the board. Yeah, the Disruptive White uh, Cat Cleric really doing his job there. Yeah, cards like Relic Warder, I don't love them in every kind of environment. But in something like here, Vintage Cube, boy, we see the power of it. It looks like Jaybro still got multiple plays here, leading with an Esper Sentinel and then following it up with an Usher of the Fallen. Yeah, that's he's still got to double spell turn two. That can be an issue. And you're running out the Lurus. Uh, that makes sense to me. It's a little sad that you're not getting value immediately off of him, but it's a three mana three two with a keyword on it so that's a real card and it's a card that can still give you value down the road yeah most mana efficient play there is what we're looking for jaybro is going to get in here with the usher and i am not incentivized to block this at all so i think jaybro was looking for you to trade there i think he was inviting the trade with with luris which you declined and then he was like well i guess i'm spending a card yeah taking the dismember targeting luris right decision there for sure from jaybro as if he targeted the relic order i'd just be able to play it again off of Loris's ability. Another land drawn mm -hmm. here, but we are going to be able to get Elspeth down. Unfortunately, yeah, not going to be able to pay the tax on that Esper Sentinel. Ooh, all right. Esper Sentinel has drawn a card. That's a good card. And Esper Sentinel is particularly good in a shell like J Bros that has all of these equipment. Yeah, and unfortunately, J Bro immediately answers that Elspeth with that Council's Judgment. Saw that card first game, and it's made it around here game two to be equally as disruptive to my game plan. Uh, but luckily, we at least have uh, one token on the battlefield. Drawing with Skull Clamp, getting a Solitude and Gaia's Cradle. Yes, get that Skull Clamp working for you. So, John, what are your thoughts about running a card like Gaia's Cradle in a non-green deck? Uh, yeah, I love it. I think that's great tech. I can understand people being scared to run an off-color land like that, but in a strategy that is a go-wide strategy, just think of it as something that's producing a whole bunch of colorless mana for you. It's got the downside that if you got nothing on board, then all of a sudden you got a land that does stone nothing, and that's a feel-bad, right? But uh, I do decide to attack there with the Relic Order, given J-Bro is Mana Vault back, but I really wanted to draw some more action, and we get Parallax Wave and Smuggler's Copters off mm, the top. Good cards. You were looking for that Parallax Wave last game. Yeah, that would have been a savior last game, but we got it this game. Hopefully we can put it to work for us, and then uh, still trying to make some mana efficient plays here we can't get solitude down no real great targets for that i am going to choose to dismember this usher i'm respecting the potential skull clamp in jaybro's hand and i i don't want him to go off with that mm. uh, usher making tokens that is an aggressive play you made there that's super interesting because dismember was one of your answers we were talking about to hero of blade hold last game with solitude and parallax wave in hand i'm feeling a little more comfortable for any large threats that jaybro may play 
And there's that skull clamp we were respecting. Ooh, skull clamp versus skull clamp. And there's that hero. Oh no. That hero again. Now that Esper Sentinel ended up drawing Jabro four cards with the tax and the skull clamp. So not a bad deal. We get Urza Saga off the top. Love this card. Uh, play this card almost in any deck and definitely happy to see it here. I am going to solitude right away, paying the full mat casting cost. I want to keep this creature around as we do have the skull clamp to pair it up with and the smuggler's copter. Uh, that we can use it to crew with. Yeah, that Urza Saga's constructs are going to be nice when you've got a skull clamp already and you've got a smuggler's copter in hand that's just going to grow those so-called constructs. Yep. Uh, ooh, Cathar Commando coming down, and he he blew up the Urza Saga. Would you have targeted the Saga there, or is that a J-Bro top-level play? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I would be tempted to take out the skull clamp, but Saga can create these constructs for you. It goes and finds something else, and you've got targets in the deck. Yeah, that was a uh, pretty heads-up play there from J-Bro. We will get the Smuggler's Copter and the Parallax Wave down. Get that student off the battlefield. Really, really a mana advantage play there. It was, yeah, because he's invested some resources in that student, and he's just losing those resources even when he gets the card back. Now, it looks like J-Bro may be passing with no play here. I don't know if he's avoiding playing stuff for that Parallax Wave, but we'll take every breather we can get. Yeah. Now, I am actually going to use this Solitude to crew up the Copter. That will give us a loot ability off the Copter. Plus, we can still move the Skull Clamp over, so we're getting the maximum damage in. Yeah, I like that play. Life isn't a problem for you right now. Um, you don't care about the lifelink on Solitude. You'd, you'd much rather filter your cards in hand and tear it through your deck, find some good action. So we filter into a plane. It's not what we're looking for, but we are one card mm. deeper now. Ooh, and then Jabro flashes in Restoration Angel. Well, and then you just take her off the board. All right. So you decline the trade there. Yeah, some some decision potentially of accepting that trade as that Restoration Angel is going to come back here in a couple turns once uh, that last counter is removed from Parallax Wave. Yeah, but you prefer to get in the damage and to keep the possibility of more filtering. And here's Jabro casting a Monastery Mentor, another token maker. And looking like he's just going to pass the turn back to us. Tide Hollow Scholar, man. Again, a day late and a dollar short, Tide Hollow Scholar. Uh, so yeah, Tide Hollow Scholar playing that. Nothing to steal from J-Bro's hand. We will use the Tide Hollow Scholar to, to crew the copter. This attack, also potentially a decision here, uh, a punt, if you will, because I chose not to attack with the Solitude. And, and upon watching this again, I think that was a mistake. Hmm. Yeah, put some more pressure on him. I could definitely see that. Ooh, but Extraction Specialist, that's a fine draw. You're going to be able to rebuy something with that. Yeah, either Jabra would have blocked with this, the Solitude or just taken it and gone to two. So we'll get this Extraction Specialist on the battlefield and rebuy this Relic Order and deal with this Skull Clamp one more time. Very good. All of these ETB creatures are working great for you. I like all of this Graveyard Recursion you have in the form of Luris and now uh, Extraction Specialist. Oh no, he's got another Planeswalker, and he's triggering that prowess. He's making cards, making additional creatures. Yeah, it looks like j is deciding to downtick Elspeth here, which is a pretty decent call as he needs some more impact on the battlefield. And bam, there it is. Yeah. An Adeline. Oof. Yeah, that worked out well for him for sure because he's broadening his board, and then Adeline herself allows him to continue broadening the board. So I do choose to exile my own Solitude here with the Parallax Wave, so we will get another Exile Trigger. Oh, I love it. I love that play. So you exile your own Solitude, so when it comes back, that's going to allow you to hit something of his, and you hit the Restoration Angel. So tell me about taking out the Resto here. Yeah, I really only had one choice here. That Resto Trigger is still on the stack, so if I did not choose the Restoration Angel to exile, Jabro just would have picked whatever creature I targeted with the Solitude. So... We are able to get that flyer off the board, though. Mm. Uh, and then Douthy Voidwalker coming off the top. I like. I want to. I want to play Douthy here before I attack, as uh, I want to exile this Elspeth and potentially replay Elspeth on my side of the board uh, later. That's great. Yeah, that would be sweet. And the Douthy itself has Shadow, of course. That may, means none of his creatures are able to block it. You can equip that with the Skull Clamp. He's at eight life. That's going to become a four one. And that's a two turn clock right there. We loot into a grief. And then I equip the skull clamp to the solitude. 
Uh, it's real close game here, real close. It is. I mean, you're in a pretty good position here. It is looking. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, you see all that mana start tapping and you know, one's heart sinks. Elish Norn. Oh. Yeah, the uh, looks like the Phyrexian is going to wipe the board here. I, I do not have a single creature with more than two toughness. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was a five for one that that Elish Norn represented. All right, so letting the aftermath from that disaster resolve, looks like we're going to end up with a couple new cards, the Vindicate and the Swords to Plowshare. So that at least offers us an answer to that Elish Norn. All right. So now Jabro's going to get in there with a massive attack, swinging in there, triggering Adelon, and it looks like we're dropping down to six. Second main here. Looks like Jabro's going to skull clamp that soldier and... Uh, Putting a Mox Pearl onto the battlefield, triggering Prowess, and making some more Monk Tokens. And now he's got the five creatures on the board, my goodness. Yeah, looking through the, the deck list here, uh, do not have any big board wipes. We've already played the Parallax Wave. Now, Spectral Procession is an interesting draw, as that's going to offer us up some blockers. Yeah, you just made three blockers with one card, that's great. You do have a removal spell in hand, although his board is so wide and not relatively tall, apart from Adeline, that that makes Vindicate less valuable than it could be on another board state. Guys, Cradle, a little bit of a limb fact here. It is creating us three colorless mana, but I cannot cast both Vindicate and Grief, as we need three black and a white, and uh, unfortunately I ca ta cannot tap that Scrubland twice. So I'm going to have to make a decision here. I need to start getting threats off the battlefield, so I'm going to choose to play this Vindicate. The question is, what threat are we going to take off? Before we make any decisions on playing this Vindicator Grief, let's draw some cards off of Skull Clamp, and that might give us some additional information. And we do get a Blood Chief's Thirst, so uh, I can cast this Vindicate and the Blood Chief's Thirst, but I think this is a huge punt here. So what I did not notice is that Adelon had a shield counter on it from Elspeth minus three. Uh, so, so that Vindicate actually did not destroy the Elspeth, just removed the shield counter. Ugh. She had a new Fangled Regeneration Shield on her. Yeah, so so remember that. If your opponent down ticks an Elspeth, that card's coming with the shield counter. That's definitely putting me in a uh, disadvantaged situation here. Uh, we are able to deal with the student, though, by casting that uh, Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, looks like Jabro's casting Batter Skull now, triggering Prowess. Oh, this is beginning to look grim. Look at that board, and that board that just keeps getting bigger every time he casts a non-creature spell. It looks like he's suiting up one of the monks. This is putting three large attackers on the battlefield. Elspeth's making another token, getting in there. Mm. At only six life, we can jump in front of these two creatures, but uh, Oof. I don't think it's going to be enough. Oof, what is that? Three, five, six. Oh, oh no. And that'll do it. Great plays there by Jabro. Real heads up, real challenging match. I can say playing Jabro was very challenging. Uh, that was a great match. I had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, some punts for sure. That punt counter, always trying to get that punt counter to zero. If any of the viewers out there, if y'all looking to play against Jabro, I think there's an opportunity coming up uh, to play against Jabro potentially. John, you want to you wanna tell them about that? There is an opportunity to play, to play against Jabro in real life in Madison, Wisconsin, October 20th through 23rd, 2022, which is when KubeCon will be happening. KubeCon, yeah, I am so excited. We're gonna have, I believe, 29 cubes in the main event, plus a free play area, and it's gonna be a great time. I can't wait. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely the Cube event of the year. Uh, so get your tickets. If you have not already gotten your tickets, go to mtgcubecon.com. Get your tickets. See J bro. Come see John Terrell. Play as cube and just come hang out. So, hey, John, with that, it's been a pleasure uh, casting this game with you. I do really appreciate it. Thanks for hanging. Thanks for chilling with me here. Don't touch that dial and let's keep cubing.